Question 14 then from paper one of the 2017 New Higher Maths. There we go. Seven marks for the wave equation. Usual two parts. Part A. Express this, which involves two separate trig terms, in terms of a single trigonometrical term, a single wave. And then part B. Do something with it. In this case, it's sketch the graph of this, which of course will be sketch the graph of that instead. Anyway, four marks for the first part. Now, whereas there is an extremely simple way to resolve that into a single trig term using phasers, you can't do that. Not that they say anywhere, do not use this. They want you to use the expansion and go through the algebra of it. The first mark is for expanding this, and you have to do it that way, and it has to be stated. So it'll be k times. Now, that sign will be sine x, and then here's another wee thorny thing here. It's in degrees, which means that, strictly speaking, you should be putting a little degree sign down wherever you mention the variable in terms of it being operated on by a function like sine or cos. However, luckily in the marking scheme it says, do not penalise the emission of degree signs. But strictly speaking, they should be there because without a degree sign, it means it's in radians. So that's sine, a, sine x cos a minus, just look up the front, cos x sine a. The first marks for doing this, now I suppose that might do in its own, but I prefer just to tidy up to get the coefficients stated properly. The coefficient of sine x of these two, that's k cos a is the coefficient of sine x, and k sine, where did that a go? a is the coefficient of cos x. There's the first mark. Now the next bit is compare the coefficients on both sides. The sine x term has got k cos a, the sine x term has got root 3, so k cos a equals root 3. The cos x term has got negative k sine a, the cos x term has got negative 1, so negative k sine a equals negative 1, or you could just drop the negatives just now instead of having to cancel them out. That gives you the second mark. These have to be stated. You can't just go ahead and say k squared equals without stating that first, even though you may get the answer. Now, strictly speaking, what you've got here are a pair of simultaneous equations. But they don't seem to be interested in the process, or even if you understand the process by which you get k and a, which is really to solve a pair of simultaneous equations. To remove a, if you square and add these, sine squared and cos squared make 1, if you square and add them, if you do 1 squared plus 2 squared, but of course there's absolutely no need to do this, you'll end up with k squared is 1 squared plus root 3 squared. And without further ado, you can say 1 and 3 makes 4, and the square root is 2, and it has to be positive because k is greater than 0. Just getting k equals 2 gets you the mark. Don't need to really explain where it comes from. Similarly, to get a, I want to get rid of k. Well, that's simpler because that's a division. 1 divided by 2. And then you'll have sine over cos making tan a. Tan a will be 1 upon root 3. Now, you recognise that immediately. That means that you've got 30 degrees. Straight away, and here's a little twist to it. The number a is 30. Or you could write a degrees is 30 degrees, but strictly speaking, the number a itself is just a number. It's 30. But you're not going to be penalised for whether you put in degree signs or not. But it might not be 30. It could be something in a different place. We'll just double check that. Remembering that k is positive, that means that the sine is positive. All sine tan cos. k is positive, so the cosine is positive. So in fact, you are in the first quadrant, so it is 30 degrees. That's not yet the final mark. The final mark then is for tidying up to say, so what did that equal? It equaled 2 sine x minus 30 degrees. There's the fourth mark. I've jumbled these up. Get away. Now, in part B it says, hence or otherwise, sketch the graph with equation y equals this, noting from x is between 0 and 360, in the answer booklet. Well, I presume the answer booklet simply had a pair of axes on it, like that. And in order to sketch this 
obviously it's easier to sketch this instead because it's just a single sine graph that's had two changes. Amplitude of two, so instead of going up one, down one, and a phase change, minus 30 means it's shifted forward 30. Simple way to draw that would just be to draw a sine graph starting at 30. Which of course goes too far. Because if it's going forward 30, it'll start at 30, but finish at 390. You'd be wanting this to finish at 360. And there's a missing part here. When you sketch a graph, you need to show points of intersection with the axis and the turning points, just all the relevant points. Now, you know where they were, and you'll be able to figure out them. But there's this one here. That should continue down until it hits the y-axis, because the picture's to start at 0. Well, that simply means put x equals 0 into the equation. Now, it's actually easier to put it into the original one, even though it's got two parts, because sines and cosines are very neat at zero. If x is zero, sine of zero is zero, cos of zero is one, so the answer is just negative one. I'll put that over here. x equals zero, y equals root three sine zero minus cos zero, which equals negative one. So you know it cuts at negative one. That means you can draw in this part of it. Now, if you have to show the complete wavelength from 0 to 360, it means it's going to finish level with it here. So really, that part shouldn't be shown. But it says in the marking scheme, don't penalise any parts that are shown beyond it. So if you've left that in, they're not going to penalise it. But that's the part which would stop at 360. You know this part's at 30. That would have been at 180 in the middle of the sine graph. It's gone forward 30, so I'll go to 210. The top would have been at 90, but it's gone forward 30. So it's 90 plus 30, so that's going to be 120. 120 along, the amplitude is 2, so it's going up 2, down 2. Maybe I'll just put a wee 2 up there as well. Same here. That would have been at 270. It's gone forward 30, so it's now at 300 but it's down at amplitudes up to, down to, down at negative two. Maybe I'll just put that there, negative two. And that's about all you can show in the graph. And the marks would have been, get these two roots, in other words, where it cuts the axis, that was 30 and 210. Get the two turning points, the 122 and the 300 negative two, and show where it cuts the y-axis, either from this or easier from this one. It's always easier to use that when x is zero. And there's the three marks.